So this is a continuation on the wireframe geometry video that I put up on my channel. This video we're going to extrude this simple part and we'll show you some ways to edit and move things and how sort of solid works a real simple example in Mastercam. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to solids and go to extrude. Then the chain dialog box comes up. I'm going to select the outside. Now I could window all this and there's other selection methods, but I'm just going to select all of them one at a time. And hit green check. Now it's going to default. Okay, it's going to default to one inch, but I was messing around with this earlier, so it's already a quarter of an inch. Make sure you name it, all right? Drill example or something like that. Make sure the distance is quarter inch and make sure you're going away from the work coordinate system, away from your flat geometry. All right. We will then hit green check. Now, if you go to view solids or go to solids right here, you'll see you have a way to get back in. If you go to solid, double click it, you can go and mess with it. You could change the chains that you want to have in there. You could actually, if you want, if you click on geometry, right click and analyze entity properties, you can change the diameter to let's say half an inch, hit green check, and notice this becomes a dirty operation it's like tool paths will. If you regenerate, that hole is now half an inch. Okay, click the hole again, right click, analyze entity properties, change it to a quarter of an inch as it was. Green check and regenerate the solid. You're good. Okay, so that's how you edit the solids. Now, if we go to our levels, okay, I have a um, level one through four. I have a stock reference, which is the rectangle. I have a holes geometry and I have solid. Okay, notice there are no entities in there. These are existing examples I had. All right. If I click on a solid, right click, analyze entity properties, I can go in here and put it on the solid level. So now the solid will turn on or off. Okay. I will make the solid active. And I forgot what I put on level one. So I'll take a look. And there's nothing there. Okay. Notice nothing. Entities. I'm going to leave that there. And I usually have some level, it doesn't necessarily be one. I will um, rename it as blank so I can sort of turn everything off. Okay. So when you do this example and extrude it, mess around with the, you know, analyze entity properties and regen the solids. One thing I will tell you is as things is more advanced, make sure you regenerate the solids. Now you cannot delete this geometry. It is based on that geometry. So if you delete it, you're going to have problems. If you move it, a window will appear that will ask you to bring wireframe geometry with the transform. Yes, you do. All right. It is like SOLIDWORKS in that way. Uh, it, it, the 2D geometry is required to have the 3D geometry. All right. So have your levels laid out. All right. One through three, four is fine. Okay. And again, the nice thing is, is you can turn things on or off. All right. So my levels are set. Solids are set. They're regenerated. All right. Um, you could rename it and this would just be drill block or, um, you know, stock or whatever you want to call it. There's, you know, no rhyme or reason. This is a pretty simple example. All right. Um, now let's start working with uh, geometry. Okay. Now notice there's only 2D geometry in the top. Okay. That's all there is. If I go to levels, I want to make um, holes active. All right. I'm going to make it active. Now any geometry I create here will be on holes. What I want to do is I want to create 2D geometry in the bottom, just for an example. All right, I can go to wireframe and I can do curve on one edge. I can select these edges on the bottom without drawing anything. I am referencing the stock model that we just created, not necessarily the stock model, the solid model. And I am selecting all of these edges. Then hitting green check. Now I have holes referenced at the top and bottom. Not there. There. Okay, just a quick way to make geometry based on a solid model, which is very useful. All right. 
Now, uh, I'm going to uh, machine this component real quick. All right, I'm going to go to machine, mill, and I'm going to pick generic host 3 axis mill, but you can use default. All right, I'm going to go to properties, and I'm going to go to tool settings. Program number, I don't really care about. Feed calculation, not really a priority right now in this example. I'm going to set the three checkboxes there, as I usually do. Stock setup. And I'm going to hit display. And instead of doing bounding box or select corners, I'm going to do all solids. So if I can move this over and hit all solids, real easy way to select all right, your stock size. All right. Hit green check. All right, notice your stock is there over the solid and minimize. Now I'm going to go to drill. Okay. I'm going to select these geometries, or if you select mask on arc, okay, click that, click that, all right, and I'm going to go to top view and select everything. Notice all the whole centers are selected. Okay, quick way to do that, not the only way, all right. You can reverse order, all right? There's, uh, you know, reset original order. There's also, um, there's select order, or you can do different sorting options, all right? Not necessarily important, just a little extra, all right? And then I'm going to hit green check. I'm going to set the tool, okay? And select tool library. Okay. Now, I'm just going to hit a quarter inch drill. I'm going to skip spot drilling for this example. What I want to do is go to quarter inch drill and hit green check. And the only thing I want to show you here versus um, my other video on drilling tool paths is now instead of typing things in, you can go to depth and select the bottom geometry and you get minus quarter inch. Your graphics display window becomes intuitive with what's going on here. You can set the retract height based on certain geometry, whatever you want to do. Okay, so it becomes very handy in this area. All right, so I'll get out of there. I mean, there's no reason to keep that operation. Hit yes, keep it. All right, and um, that's really it for now. I'm going to break this up in a couple of videos. Uh, what I want to do now in the next video, you'll see importing fixturing and then uh, machining toolpaths. And then we'll uh, mess around with simulation.